Alex from Diamond Arm. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. We will get the big picture of the world markets in this video and look at the VT, Vanguard Total World Stock Market ETF. First off, let's get some, uh, you know, some picture here about what's going on in the market. Here you can see the different sectors, and here are the sidegeists. Some uh, pretty big uh, moves. Uh, the VT gives us, you know, the big, you know, 10,000 foot view of uh, the market. And let's first look at the seasonality. Between 2008 and 2020, you can see that there usually actually is a bit of a loss. Minus 0.7% in August, then it gets you know stronger into the later part of the year. So there is some clear seasonality here. You can see some up, down, up, uh, down. Let's compare it against the S&P 500, which is you know the ultimate uh, benchmark. Like uh, okay, blah blah blah. There is some advertising. Like um, that. Okay, let's get more years. Okay, this is uh, rather interesting. For some reason, September is the strong, strongest month for VT versus the S&P 500, which is quite relevant for us given that we are now towards the end of August. So 67% of the time, the VT outperforms the S&P. That's, that's relevant. So let's now look at the charts. So this is all the data we have here, weekly data points, we go back to 2008. Um, here of course is the big uh, bear market, from this uh, low here to this recent high. We do have a 255% gain, that's pretty big. You can see here that the VT clearly moves in these major cycles. You have initially these small cycles after the massive uh, bear market. But you could make the case that we have three big primary cycles. One primary cycle cycle within which was three smaller. Then you have the second primary cycle. The third primary cycle. You can see that there are some similarities between this cycle here and the initial one after the bear market. Given that we did have this major crash, um, <laughs> that does certainly disrupt the cycle patterns. So, so the current, uh, it's currently a bit messy, but we quite clearly have a major rally here off the lows. And we did break out to new all-time high. Uh, we do not yet have a all-time high inflation adjusted, okay, it's because this, this chart does not take into account the inflation that we have seen since uh, the inception of the ETF. But still, you know, we do technically do have a new all-time high here, which is, you know, bullish. However, you could make the case that we do have bearish divergence here on the RSI. We do have lower highs, potentially, and some lower lows. That's interesting. That's more bearish. Uh, you also here have um, the accumulation distribution line, but that one is corroborating quite significantly the... Re the well, it is actually not fully corroborating the most recent rally. So, that, so there is some slight bearish divergence there as well. But we are above all the key moving averages, of course that's bullish. Um, but if you look at the history of this uh, ETF, you see that it prefers to actually use the purple 20 week moving average as the key support level during rallies. That's the key support. Um, we are very far away from the 20 week. The previous times we have been this far away from the 20 week, it has been a harbinger of a correction. And there's a 79% positive correlation with the S&P 500. Okay, let's now load uh, and look at the daily data points. So here you can see you know, the red 200 day moving average, which is you know, a very important moving average. You see that it's been relevant m many times in the past. Test, test, test. It's a, it's a key level that we like to test. And we are quite far away from that moving average. Um, we usually do not like to be that far away. So that's also one of those risks here as far as mean reversion goes. So there is a risk, given the history of this ETF, that we will, that we will just do what we usually do. That, that is to test that key moving average. The reason why we like to test it is to 
um, to really see whether there is um, euphoria or a longer term setup. And that's basically what, basically basically what happens. Uh, so during when you do test it, it is not in and of itself something that should be interpreted as um, uh, bearish as far as like a bear market uh, kind of bearishness goes. It's more about it's actually it's kind of a sign of a confidence as well because if when you do allow when the powers that be you know the central banks and the likes when they allow a test of those key moving averages without interfering that is a sign of you know that they believe in the market that the market will sort of sort itself out there seems to be a sense of desperation here when it comes to the central banks and all the other meddlers in the market they do not want any kind of pullback and I think that the risk is fair that if we do actually do have a pullback to the 200 day now um, maybe it's not going to function that well as a support level if we load uh, the data here and look at RSI on the daily data points you can see that looking at all of these years we do not like to be oversold or overbought given that we are currently overbought that is a risk as far as uh, a, a correction goes mm -hmm. You see here on the daily data points that we do actually do have a corroboration of the rally uh, as far as the AD line goes. Okay. Now let's look at some other data. So here we have Finvis. So you can see that, that there are options available on the VT and it is shortable. Um, that's beneficial as far as putting on uh, you know any kind of uh, position that would benefit from a potential pullback. Uh, let's be perfectly clear, the bulls are in control at the moment, we don't want to fight the trend, but given the history of WT and the current setup, it makes more sense to look for a bearish opportunity here than uh, further euphoria, because this is currently becoming a, a, a statistical anomaly, you know, this move. Okay, so if we go to sax.com, they have a number 3 hold on VT. If we go here and look at some dividend and valuation, you can see, by the way, that the expense ratio is extremely low, 0.09. That's because it's from Vanguard and they have incredible expense ratios. Looking at the PE, it's 18. You have a low PE here, 11 from SPGP. That is the Invesco S&P 500 GARP ETF. The highest PE here at 143. That's the Wisdom 3 Modern Tech Platforms Fund. So the tech companies are definitively getting a bit richly valued. As far as the dividend, you have a very bad dividend here from Hyper, that is Direction High Growth ETF. And the 11% dividend here for the Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. Yeah, yeah that's a good uh, dividend. The VT has a 2% dividend, which is you no know, decent. Okay, so to sum up my take here on the VT. Yes, to be perfectly clear, we don't want to fight the trend, the bulls are in control, we do have a new all-time high. The problem we have is that the history of this ETF is that it likes to have these corrections to these levels we have identified. That is the fact. So, given that it usually the primary trend throughout all the history is that it likes to correct to those moving averages after an extended rally, that is actually a more important trend than the last you know few months so you need to wait so whenever you look at trends and uh, determine your position you need to look at the bigger picture okay and the bigger picture suggests that being very euphoric at this these levels thinking that it will just continue to fly up without any correction that is actually fighting the trend so so, so like so th that's the key thing here when uh, considering trends you have this trend here, this move, that's one trend, and then you have this, all the history. Here, bulls are in charge, let the trend be your friend, this is of course the most recent development, very relevant, but given all the history here, it suggests to us that even though the bulls are in charge, we need to be very careful at these levels. So don't fight the trend, and may the trend be with you.